Well, I am no stranger to injuries in the workshop. Uh, I would be lucky to get through a couple of weeks without having to put a Band-Aid on some little scratch or cut on the hands or fingers. Thankfully though, they are just that, they're small scratches and cuts. And the majority of the time, I think to myself after the fact, what were you thinking? And um, you know, often it'll be where I was tired at the end of the day, or I'm rushing, or you know, I've taken a shortcut perhaps. Um, but one area, in the workshop where I will not take shortcuts is when it comes to guards on machinery. And in this video, I want to uh, just make some basic cuts, cuts that I do every day on the, on the table saw, all of which I use a guard for. Okay, before I get started, I do want to make note of the fact that I am using a riving knife here. Um, my guard is in fact attached to the riving knife, that's how, uh, how, it, how it works on this saw. Um, but even with a, an overhead guard, I would still be uh, using a rive, riving knife. So anyway, first cut I'm going to make is just a rip on this three-quarter plywood. Um, I'll use the, the standard long fence, there's no point in changing that out for this cut. So uh, yeah, here we go. I'm not even going to bother with the scriber, but uh, um, yeah, After. I've had the machine isolated, so. So there you go, nice and simple. Um, what if though I had to make a cut on something really narrow? That's going to be a little trickier. And that's where this uh, fence is super handy um, because I can change it like so and put it down in a lower position. I mean, you could say, well, my fence doesn't do that. And that's totally fair. However, uh, if your fence doesn't do this, it's super easy to, to make up a, an auxiliary fence, something like a, uh, an L-shaped piece of, you know, wood. Obviously, this is a little bit low, but, you know, something like this that you could clamp onto your fence and, uh, and create a, a low sort of fence like this. And it just gives you that much uh, more space to be able to make this rip. So, um, wrong place that one. So I'm going to now make a, a rip, um, really narrow rip, and uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So there we go, pretty, pretty darn easy. And the blade guard is there, not, not really in my way at all. Okay, this cut is a little trickier. Uh, I've got a 45 degree angle cut and I'm going to do it on this piece of three quarter, which is oh, an inch and a sixteenth. And I'm going to take a little bit of a 45 degree cut off this. I won't be super accurate, just because for the purpose of the video, we just want to see how this works. So there you go. Now, there's no reason why you couldn't make a jig up or something up uh, on a crosscut sled for a regular um, table saw or a panel saw uh, to do exactly the same thing. And again, blade guard is in place and you know it's not hindering my work in any way, shape or form, but it does help keep me protected from that blade. So, Okay, now we're gonna try and, uh, well now we're gonna rip some material, but uh, in order to, to do that, I'm going to 
uh, change the blade on this to a rip blade because one of the uh, problems obviously when I'm using too fine a blade is that things heat up and uh, things are going to move around. It's just going to be a lot more work on the saw and uh, it'll be a lot safer to just change the blade. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so didn't take very long, but it sure is going to make my rip cuts a lot faster and a lot safer. So Okay, time to make some cross cuts. So there you go, there's a whole bunch of different cuts, cuts that I would, uh, a lot of which that I would make in a typical workday, uh, and all done with the blade guard in place. So um, yeah, uh, really no excuse, certainly no excuse for me to remove a guard. Um, and you know, in those situations where I'm not thinking or you know, I'm rushing or whatever the case may be, and if I do, you go to grab something uh, where I'm reaching across the blade, I don't come in contact with the, with the blade and, and uh, you know, risk serious injury. So hopefully, you know, this makes you think about the guard and maybe looking at it and using it and, you know, uh, maybe even you may take some modifications to your fences to, to be able to, you know, keep it on more often than not. Uh, maybe even some mod modifications to the guard itself to make it easier to take off, off and put back on. Uh, uh, a riving knife is another one. Um, you know, try and keep that riving knife on as much as you possibly can. Um, that's a big one. And uh, yeah, I just uh, hope that this uh, makes people sort of out there perhaps stop and think, well, actually, it's really not that big a deal to have the blade guard on. So maybe I'm going to try. And, uh, and yeah, if it sort of stops uh, or helps avoid any injuries to anyone, then, you know, I think this has been well worth making. So. All right, uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.